Hello, a chroeso i bedwarad darlith lenyddol Dewi Sant, coleg Kelv Abertawe, Prifasgol Cymru, Drindod Dewi Sant. Hello and welcome to the fourth annual St David's Day Lecture at Swansea College of Art, University of Wales, Trinity St David. This year it's my pleasure to present a special guest who's been a mainstay of Welsh language broadcasting for over 30 years. From muddy fields to red carpets, our guest is equally at home presenting from the National Eisteddfod or from London Fashion Week. His face is familiar, his voice is popular, and his sartorial taste is influential. Here's Hugh Rees to guide us on a whistle-stop tour of his creative education and his glittering professional career. It's clear that Hugh has an inspirational passion and enthusiasm for connecting to people wherever he goes, and Hugh highlights the importance of speaking Welsh to make and maintain these connections. Dydd Gwyl Dewi, hapus iawn i chi gyd. Happy March the 1st, St David's Day to you all. I hope you're having a wonderful day doing all things Welsh, eating Welsh cakes, bara brief, and wearing something resplendent to celebrate the day. My name's Hugh Rees, but I'm most obviously known and have been known as Hugh Fash for maybe the past 30 years. And the reason for that is not that I'm flash, but because I specialise in fashion. I followed a degree in MA in fashion um, and have, for the past 30 years, been a fashion specialist reporter on Channel 4 Wales S4C, a Raglen Gymraeg, a Channel Gymraeg, on Welsh programmes on the Welsh Channel. My career started, funnily enough, in the DVLA in Swansea, um, where I'd gone straight from my A-levels, and after several months sat at a microfiche machine, feeding in bits of paper daily, 30 pieces of paper in each section to be precise, I decided that maybe I needed to find a new career path. And so I went back to my roots and thought, well, I did A-level art. I wasn't great at it, I have to admit, but it was something that I'd always been interested in. So off I went to the Carmarthen School of Art. It was then known as David College of Art, under the tutelage of great names such as Lynn Davis, Geraint Evans, and of course, Ozzy Osmond, uh, the prolific and well-known artist. What was great for Carmarthen is that it was a Welsh-speaking college. There were lots of Welsh-speaking staff, which made me feel very comfortable because Welsh was my first language. And therefore, I spent a great deal of my time talking to lecturers, discussing things in Welsh, which I felt far more comfortable with at the time. I think finding the right college environment is very, very important when it comes to your career. Um, I think I found myself for the first time when I got to come on the College of Art because I was surrounded by like-minded people who didn't make me feel frivolous because I loved art and all creative things. Uh, during my time at the college, I specialised in fashion. And so when the time came um, to move on and to do a degree, I decided to do a little bit of research and decided to go to Central St. Martins, which was the most famous of all the art colleges. So off I went to the centre of London. Uh, it took it was a seven hour journey to get to London in those days. You had to go by train and change tubes, something of course a little Welsh guy from the valleys had never, never experienced. Off I went to St. Martin's and lo and behold, I was offered a place on the course. However, a couple of weeks later, life took a strange turn. A friend of mine at the college, uh, at Carmarthen College, was going for an interview to Ravensbourne, which was just on the outskirts of London in a far more green and leafy Kent environment, uh, and asked whether I'd go with her for company. So off I went um, on this little day trip, thinking nothing more of it than to enjoy a nice sandwich on the train um, and to visit a different college. And the minute I walked through the gates at Ravensbourne, I realised that this is where I'd like to do my degree. So hastily sort of reapplied, broke all the rules and conventions really because everyone wanted to go to St. Martin's um, and told them at Ravensbourne that I had a place in St. Martin's. And they immediately offered me a place at Ravensbourne. I moved on from there after doing uh, three years on a very commercial course, course which was very much competition-led, um, that you competed in lots and lots of national competitions. Um, I then, of course, went to the Royal College of Art, and again, very competitive, competition-led, uh, and was luckily to be offered two jobs on the back of both of these colleges. So I left university and went to Amsterdam to work for a company called, called Oil Lily. And of course, Oil Lily was a huge children's wear company uh, in Amsterdam, but little did I know how much Marika, uh, the owner of the company, would inspire me. She was a lady 
who had started her company in her front room and had grown the company to such extent that it was one of the largest exporters of fashion in the Netherlands at the time. So I spent a very enjoyable time designing wild prints, tie-dye prints, all sorts of creative things, which was like one step on from college in a way for this company and had a thoroughly nice time. From there, I went to Italy where I worked with Penny Black. Penny Black was a subsidiary of Max Mara at the time. Uh, and the reason for going there was that I thought, well, I've learned to speak Italian. However, little did I know that the reason they'd offered me the job was because I spoke English, um, which was hilarious considering so much I appreciated speaking my Welsh language. I was employed in Italy because I spoke English. So therefore, my grasp of Italian is as poor now as it was then. After coming back uh, to work in London, <coughs> I worked for Rees, a large menswear company, which is now a well-known high street brand, but had received a very interesting phone call from S4C. S4C was the channel, of course, um, that was the Welsh channel, as I've explained. Um, it was a Welsh language channel, and they'd launched a new flagship uh, uh, show, which was a primetime show called Heno. Now, I phoned home, spoke to my parents, and my mum and dad, of course, were very excited that I did a phone call from a TV company. And the whole point of Heno was that it was everyday Welsh for everyday people, covering everyday um, things that happened in different communities throughout Wales and beyond. So the phone call went something like, Hi, I hear you speak well. I hear you're doing fashion in London. I said, yes. Um, you speak Welsh. Obviously, we were speaking Welsh. I said, yes. How would you feel about coming down once a week to Swansea to do a show for us? So, of course, I jumped at the opportunity and off I went to Swansea. Little did I think that 30 years later, I'd still be presenting on the Heno show, of course, in a different studio by now, but basically doing the same job. And people ask me, why did you stay in your job? And I tell everyone, because I'm one of the luckiest people when it comes to employment. I do a job that I'm qualified to do because I've got my credentials when it comes to fashion. I do a job where I get to talk to lots of different people and I get to talk all day, which as you can see from this video, is something I find easy to do. I can talk and talk and talk for Britain. Someone once told me you could talk for 20 minutes about a zip, and to be honest, I think I could. And of course, I'm doing something that I love. I'm talking about fashion, I'm talking about art, and my job opens up so many different paths for me during the working week. One day I'll be working on a fashion feature which is to do with sustainability, for instance. This week I've been talking to a, nail, a new label um, who are doing sustainable fashion. I met her at Graduate Fashion Week in London. She's moved on to, do a, uh, to create a label which creates clothes out of old clothes. So that's something I'm going to be showing on the show. The next day, of course, I was doing high street fashion because a lot of our wheel viewers wear clothes from the high street. And it's something that's important to remember that your viewers lead the way, really, when it comes to your choice of garments. My clothes have got to suit every budget and every type of person. So then I'll be looking at the high street. And then, of course, I've spent the whole weekend doing virtual London Fashion Week because our viewers also like to know about all the trends, uh, all the star-studded events that happen throughout the world. Uh, and we bring them a taste of this. So this week I've been researching into Welsh designers who have shown uh, at London Fashion Week, which has been very interesting. Of course, on top of doing all the jobs for the week where fashion uh, are involved, my path leads me onto different directions. For instance, the BAFTAs. The BAFTA Cymru is one of the highlights of the year. Uh, as we know, it's grown tremendously uh, during the last few years uh, and is a huge red studded carpet event that draws Welsh actors and Welsh producers, Welsh production teams from everywhere. And of course, I get to stand on the red carpet to ask questions. However, I'm known in Wales as Hugh Fash. So the last thing I'm going to do is ask the obligatory question, which is, Hi, how are you? Tell me about your film. The first thing I say is, oh, I love your jacket. Where did you get that from? Which immediately changes the nature uh, of the interview. And of course, being in Welsh language, it actually gives you even more warmth uh, and intimacy because all of a sudden you're asking people about things maybe they didn't think they were going to be talking about and immediately their guard is left down and the answers you get to all the questions are very different to the questions that the majority of reporters would have who are asking maybe the hard-hitting questions to do with production, filming, etc. And through this job on the red carpet, I've met very many celebrities and very many very clever, creative people which have opened so many doors for us where features are involved uh, on the show. 
Another highlight of my job, of course, is that I deal with all things lifestyle. And lifestyle to me includes arts. And as a lover of all things arts and creative, it means that every week I kind of feed my passion. Um, I meet designers, I meet makers, I meet craftspeople. I can travel around in pre-pandemic days to different little studios all over Wales, to studios beyond Wales where we've got Welsh artists working. And I meet all these fabulous kind of groundbreaking artists who are doing new things in a very small way, sometimes in places that you've never heard of, in studios that you'd never imagine would be where they are, but they're creating the most wonderful things that are selling worldwide. And as you can tell, that's something that gives me a lot of excitement when I meet all these people, and hence my house is full of bits and pieces that I just buy from all these artists that you meet uh, along the way. The career path I chose is one, of course, that's quite unique. And it's unique because of the Welsh language. If I had stayed in London to become a fashion specialist, I would have been fighting against so many other, competing against so many other stylists uh, who wanted to do the same job. Of course, when you come to Wales, the pot is smaller. The pot's smaller because obviously the specialist nature of my job uh, means that not, that not that many people who speak Welsh fluently actually choose to follow maybe sometimes a fashion path or a fashion journalism path. Um, and that, of course, has kept me, as I said, in my job for 30 years and has opened all these additional uh, jobs for me. So the fact that I spoke Welsh was very important because it was something that got me the job in the first place. It was something that got me noticed in the first place and is something that I relish all the time. The majority of the features that I film, we're always looking for a Welsh connection. For instance, if I go to London Fashion Week, we always try and find Welsh contributors. And over the years, I've met really, really interesting people, stylists, hairdressers, makeup artists, designers, students who are there helping out. And of course, this leads to lifelong relationships with these people. So some of the people that I met 25 years ago, when they were just out of university, are now nearly as old as I am, and of course, are still practicing uh, their art and still speaking Welsh. And that's kept us very much in touch. So I think the Welsh language with my job has been an integral part of everything that I do from day to day. Apart from landing me a dream job, how has Welsh influenced and played a part in what I do? Well, of course, speaking Welsh means that whenever I'm looking for someone with a Welsh connection, you're having to look that little bit harder. And it means that I've met and spoken to people who live all across the world. And in the days, of course, of technology. It means that we can interview, speak and can have these people contribute to our shows no matter where they are in the world. For instance, actors like uh, Matthew Rees, who has often been on the show discussing the work that he does out in Hollywood. And of course, he's one of the major players. Johan Griffiths, another actor in Hollywood, who relish the fact that they can speak Welsh. These communities, of course, whatever city they are, wherever they are in the world, Bring, be speaking Welsh actually bring them together and it gives them a little bit of honesty and a bit of warmth and a feeling that they're at home. It gives you that slight connection with people. Um, I've met designers all over the world. During lockdown, I found it's been really, really encouraging when you're doing your research and knowing that people are happy to talk to you from their homes on virtual media, uh, that we can talk to anyone. I met Nia Winglass, a very interesting designer uh, who trained and was based in Cardiff and who's now uh, one of the heads at H&M out in Sweden. She's been one of the interviews on the TV. Maybe someone I wouldn't have found or maybe someone I wouldn't have spoken to unless I was looking for that Welsh speaking connection. Gwilym Lansley, a menswear designer who's been designing out in Germany um, for a fabulous collection for CNA. If you all remember CNA back in the day, the majority of you won't, you're too young, but it was one of the major high street stores of the day. Of course, it left the UK, but it's still a predominant store in Europe. Um, so we've been able to catch up with him, give some of the history of the show. We also talked to someone called May Flynn. Uh, May Flynn is a wellness uh, coach who has lived in Cambodia, she's lived in India, she's been in Bangladesh, she's currently based in Spain. Um, May, of course, contributes to her show, especially during the pandemic, um, telling us the best ways, the most encouraging ways of getting through your day and making sure that life stress is actually diluted during this time. But this is all um, possible because they speak Welsh and they speak Welsh all across the world. And what you find is that when you speak Welsh to someone, you'll come up with lots of interesting stories, people you'd never have heard of. 
The Welsh love to talk, as you can tell. So when you're walking down the street and you meet Mrs Jones, who's buying her bread, I'll say, oh, hi, Mrs Jones, how are you? Oh, I'm good, she says, how are you? How's work? Oh, great, I say, it's busy. Oh, I'll tell you, she'll say, who works in television? Have you heard of Mark James? Mark James, yes, yes, his father's from Brynamon. Yes, well, he's now out in Los Angeles working on the latest Brad Pitt, George Clooney film. Suddenly, just through a bit of local gossip, because we speak Welsh, what have we got? We've got another feature for the TV. And you find out as a TV reporter, researcher, that's one of the important things to do. Talking to people constantly is a great, great benefit to all the work you do on television. Fashion highlights. Well, of course, fashion highlights for me was taking part in winning Welsh Designer of the Year back in the day. However, the highlights for me are when I see Welsh designers on the catwalk in London, not only taking part, but competing at the same level as some of the top designers. And I'm fortunate enough to have been to London Fashion Week every season for nearly 30 years. However, the last three seasons, including this one, that's just gone, of course, haven't happened in the usual form. We've all been in lockdown, fashion shows in lockdown. So it means that all the shows that we normally go and see, where we'll queue for 20 or 30 minutes just to get into the show, sit for an hour, waiting for the show to happen, surrounded by people on a very narrow bench, which isn't great if you're amply proportioned as I am, waiting for the show to happen, which then takes eight minutes. Um, it's far from being glamorous, but for someone who loves fashion, it's one of the highlights um, of my year and happens twice a year. What's happened now that we're seeing it happening virtually, of course, is that we've got a better understanding of what the designer wants us to feel and experience when we see the clothes. Because when you get to the level of London Fashion Week, it's an art form. One of my pet hates is people who say, oh, who would wear that? Well, sometimes it's not who will wear that, but who will get inspired by what they've just seen on that catwalk. And what I love, of course, is when you come in and you see new talent, new creativity, hitting the catwalk for the first time, and you see that real sort of freshness and lack of restraint that doesn't happen very often when you further your fashion career and you're stuck to a computer and the number of buttons and pockets on a jacket. The highlights, Julian MacDonald. Julian MacDonald, of course, is a huge, well-known fashion designer um, who dresses celebrities, red carpets all over the world. Um, he has an exquisite lifestyle, exquisite fashion label, exquisite fashion trends. And we're fortunate that every season that Julian invites us to his show and also puts us on one of the few lists of people who get to interview him. And the reason Julian does that, I'm sure, is because his family are still living in Merthyr. So his extended family can then see the interview that we do in Welsh on TV. Uh, and I think it's something that he thoroughly enjoys. We were there at his first fashion show and hopefully will continue to be at his fashion shows for many, many more years. Another designer who made his mark in London, a Welsh speaking designer, Elliot Fries. Elliot was a menswear designer, um, qualified in Cardiff and then went on to immediately start his own fashion label, which is no mean feat and a brave step for a designer and immediately wanted to go to London. A lot of the clothes were produced in London, a lot at his home in Brecon, um, and then hit the catwalks of London. And Elliot's collections always brought something new, something diverse, but always had a slight Welsh flavour to what was really an international collection. Jane Pearson, of course, is another outstanding talent, still based in Wales, still designing out near the airport in Pembrey. Uh, and her collection has developed over the years, so the sustainability is key, and being kind to the environment is key, reusing product is key. And a fantastic way that she showed the world how to do this is by getting together, of course, and collaborating with a wonderful artist from Port Albert, uh, Neil Howells. So her garments were covered in graffiti-inspired print, reused leather jackets, painted and beautifully turned into pieces of art. Uh, and Jane, of course, again taking part in the virtual uh, London Fashion Week this season. So the highlight of my career, without a doubt, has been seeing Welsh people on major catwalks throughout the world, but just not competing or holding their own, but also leading the way when it comes to things like glamour and sustainability, two words that sometimes aren't thought of in the same sentence. So the last question on the list that was submitted was, tell us something interesting to finish the chat. And I thought to myself, what's interesting? Well, what's interesting to me these days is, of course, that I've had to change my way of thinking totally. After 30 years on the same path, doing the same thing, 
even though meeting uh, and introducing new things constantly, in essence, it was the same trail. It was researching, presenting, filming, editing, transmitting. I'm now having to do everything from my own home. Who would have thought a year ago that I would now know how to do Zoom, we transfer, Dropbox, all the words that come so easily to a younger generation are something that's new to something such as myself. So I've had to sit here and learn technology because all the features that we create at the moment, apart from a studio guest who's allowed in the studio, are done from home, done on location with all the safety regulations in place. So for instance, I can't go and film a model. The models now have to film themselves on their phones or their iPads at home, then send us the work via WeTransfer. We send it to the edit suite, so it's then ingested, making sure that it's of transmittable quality to be shown on TV. I have to sit here today and do this interview, which I've already done in Welsh for the best part of Noah, and do it again in English without um, a person in front of you. And it's very strange when you're so used to sitting and being interviewed by people, how strange it is to sit and just look at yourself on a screen and keep on talking uh, and talking and talking and talking. And I'm sure you feel like that. So what I find interesting to finish the chat is the fact that everything has carried on. Even though parts of the world and parts of our lives have come to a standstill, other parts of our world and our lives have developed and have redeveloped. And we're thinking of new ways of creating, new ways of being creative. And such as yourselves at home, sitting in front of a commuter, we're thinking of new ways of being artistic and new ways of looking at our work. And I think that's something that's very interesting considering the downplayment of the pandemic. Thank you to Hugh Rees for sharing his wise and inspirational words with us today. The last year has been difficult for most of us and has surely changed many of our plans for good. But as Hugh states, we've had to learn how to adapt and upskill and we can now begin to imagine a new future with broader networks linked by technology. And as Hugh says, learn to seize the moment. I'd like to thank Hugh once again and to thank you for watching. I hope to be able to meet you again next year back in the reading room at Swansea College of Art. Hoi la matro.